Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Alan with another broadcast of the Morlog Morning Digest for you. As always, I ask that you guys please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and most importantly, share the content to help the channel grow. I do have a few links in the description below for donations. One is a Bitcoin link, as well as a link to my PayPal. I would greatly appreciate any contributions. It would help me moving forward. I have a few things in the work, so any contributions definitely help. I'm trying to make some moves. You can also find a link to my BitChute channel on there as well. And that's in case YouTube decides they want to get rid of me. They've been doing it to quite a few people. You'll be able to find me there if they do. Now, today I want to talk about the myth of self. We are a very ego-driven culture, okay? And this goes back, in my mind, to how we identify ourselves in Western society. Now, if you ask somebody from a Western culture, where does their consciousness reside? They're going to point to their head. Most people right, identify themselves completely separate from their body and the world around them. They believe that they reside somewhere between their eyes, their ears, and the back of their head. And the rest of their body is just a vessel for that consciousness. Whereas, and this is very ego-driven, all right. Whereas Eastern cultures, such as Buddhists or the Japanese, a lot of Asian cultures, okay, Polynesians even, when you ask them to identify themselves, okay, they tend to point to their heart, their solar plexus. In general, they identify themselves in a lot less of an ego-driven manner and they have a deeper connection to their body, right? They don't view their body as a vessel so much. And they also, and this is where things get very interesting in my opinion, they have more of a connection to the outside world. In other words, they detach from their ego a lot more than Western society. And that is what I believe the biggest problem a lot of us listening to my channel would have when it comes to identifying one's self. Let me dive a little deeper here. Because it all boils down to ego, alright? And the reason Western society has become so ego-driven as far as self-identification is because, as I've said, we view ourselves in our headspace and everything else just dangles down from that. We're completely disconnected from it, as well as the outside world. So it puts us in this position where we are always trying to conquer nature, okay? Because we are completely separate from it. That is how we view ourselves. And this sets us up in opposition to everything that the world gives us. Now, as society has gotten more and more modern, it has only fed the ego more and more as well, further leading to us losing touch with ourself, okay? Because what has happened is... We do not believe in God in the same sense our ancestors did even 150 years ago. Now, let me explain. Modern society has evolved to the point where science has become a pursuit of explaining everything fully. And the more and more science, right, has gotten into our culture, it's become so pervasive that we ourselves are intelligent, right? And it's gotten to the point where science puts it so far out of the realm of logic, or what, what they would call logic, right? Based on what they teach you in school. It puts God so far out of being 
plausible that most people, right, view themselves as the only intelligence in this universe because that's how they identify, right? They don't see themselves as connected to that and they don't see themselves as being created of this world, right? They were, they see themselves as alien to it. The best comparison that I can make here is think about a tree, okay? And then compare that tree to the earth. If I were to say that you as a human being were analogous to a tree, what would you identify as on that tree? Would you identify as a bird that came and landed on a dead tree from somewhere else, right? Or would you identify as a leaf growing from that tree? Or think of the earth as an apple tree, okay? An apple tree, apples. That's why we call it an apple tree. Well, the earth peoples, right? The earth gave birth to our consciousness. And the better way to look at this is the earth is conscious itself, okay? It's a living organism. Everything around you is conscious to one degree or another. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to interact with it. And this is where the Eastern philosophies and Eastern cultures are so much different from the Western cultures because the Buddhists understand that even a rock has equal consciousness to a human being. A human being's consciousness is just much more complex, but it's still equal, okay? And just because we are sentient of our consciousness doesn't mean that our consciousness is any greater than that of a crystal that we pick up off of the ground. Because what happens when you smack that crystal? It resonates. So long as that crystal can resonate, that crystal has consciousness. Everything in this reality is consciousness or it wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be perceivable to us. Now what that tells me is we, the self, right, is everything. And as soon as you learn to let go of the ego, right, and stop viewing yourself as more intelligent than the world that you are in, the more clear this will become. Now, psychedelics help me to achieve this, and there are natural ways of getting there. But when you can experience the death of one's ego, you soon realize that there is much, much more than our life experienced consciousness. So the thing that Eastern cultures also have, in my opinion, over Western cultures as far as the identification of self is, they do not fear death in the way that us in Western cultures do. And that is because, once again, us in Western cultures are afraid that death is something akin to going to sleep and never waking up again. And that is because, like I said before, we identify ourselves in Western culture as completely separate than the reality that we exist in. We don't see ourselves of being born of this reality. We see ourselves being made into this reality. And that is where we lose complete self-identification. Because we are the world that we find ourselves in. We are the reality that we find ourselves in. It's the only way that you can explain certain feelings that you get as a human being. Intuition, precognition. There's a lot of things that present themselves in this reality that don't make sense if our consciousness is separate from everything around us and we were placed into this system, okay? In one way or another, our consciousness has to be aware of everything 
going on. And that is because, like I said, I humbly believe that our self is everything around us. And the consciousness that we experience is simply a manifestation or a sliver of that consciousness, right? Acting independently to gain an experience. In turn, you have to wonder if, on a day-to-day -day basis, you are truly interacting with yourself. And this is why the myth of oneself has been the complete downfall to Western society. Because if you came to the realization that you are everything, and you are at one with every other consciousness because that consciousness is yourself, you are just a segment of that self, you would treat every consciousness around you as yourself. And that right there is the key to bringing this reality into the place of balance and harmony. All right, and that is what nature has constantly been trying to pursue. Because for one to make the argument that self is completely independent from reality is ludicrous. Because, for example, the Earth puts off a resonance called the Schumann resonance, okay? And in turn, the human body vibrates at a frequency that is directly affected and correlates to the Schumann Resonance and vice versa, the Human Resonance can change the Schumann Resonance as well. And it has been shown as our awareness of self, of the conscious state in humans rises, so does the consciousness and the resonance of the earth that we were birthed out of. Because at the end of the day, we are the leaves on the tree, and the tree is earth. Now, we can debate theology all day long, but there is a creator. There has to be. Because intelligence cannot come from an unintelligent place. Information can neither be created nor destroyed. Therefore, if we exist, there had to have been an intelligence to translate that information into existence and give us the ability to even have this issue of not knowing ourself. At the end of the day, I hope this video shows you the world around you is probably more of who you are than what you identify yourself as. In other words, you yourself have a much more profound of an effect on the world around you than you realize because the world is you, right? And in turn, you have to realize that you can, you can influence a lot more than just what's in between your headspace if you're aware of the fact that you're not just your headspace. It's a very complicated subject to grasp, but I honestly believe that that is the key to understanding all alchemy. And at the end of the day, once you understand alchemy, you can start using it to alter the world around you. And all alchemy is, this is the true understanding of alchemy okay and the true understanding of self is that for every outside there is an inside and for every inside there is an outside okay and they are one in the same and they can't exist without each other and what's funny is they are doppelgangers but at the end of the day and they are the same so their goal is what you represent to the outside world as yourself right 
is completely different, right, than your inner self, but at the end of the day, they are identical. That is the definition of alchemy. And the thing about alchemy is, it is used to create, and it can only be, it can only be put in place by a creator to begin with. That's the key to life. I know it may seem too simple, but at the end of the day, that is really all there is to it. And every philosophy in life, as long as you have that foundation of knowing what self actually is, you can only go up. Because once you have a good foundation, it's never going to crumble. Any smart architect can tell you that. Have a great day. God bless.